So our first step for solving one of these problems every single time is to combine these resistors. So we can combine these two in series, just add those two resistances together. So this one now is just 2 plus 4. This is still R2, and this is still R1. So those haven't changed. Now we can combine these two, which are in parallel with each other. So this is our uh, 1 over R total equals 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Or you can use the little shortcut rule when you only have two resistors that you're adding together. The total is going to be the product of those two resistors over the sum of the resistors. So this is only if we have two resistors. This one will work every time, no matter how many resistors you have. So either way, you're going to throw in your numbers. Those two 6 ohm resistors are going to turn into one 3 ohm resistor. Still got R1 over here. Haven't changed anything about that yet. And finally, we can combine those two into one. So now that we've figured out the overall current in this whole circuit, or the overall resistance, we can figure out the current. So if the current is equal to V over R, then here we just have 60 volts over 5 ohms. So our current going through this whole thing is 12 amps. So we haven't yet figured out anything else about our original circuit, but what we have figured out is we figured out this current and that current is going in this loop as well. So it's 12 amps over there. It's still 12 amps going through this loop. It's also 12 amps going through most of this circuit, uh, but not here where it splits up into two. So there are 12 amps going over here, which is the same 12 amps that go over here, but we're going to have those 12 amps splitting up uh, once it gets to that junction. So we have figured out a couple things, because now we see that this 12 amps that we've calculated goes right through R1. It hasn't yet split up as it's going through here, so we do have 12 amps going through that resistor. So the current going through resistor number 1, I1, that's going to be 12 amps. Now that we've figured out two uh, items of information about resistor number one, we can figure out the third. So we can figure out the voltage, which is just the product of the current and the resistance. So our voltage for resistor number one, or our voltage drop, is 24 volts. So this 24 volts tells us that the battery started over here at 60 volts, and we know it has to end at zero. And it's 60, it's 60, it's 60, and then as it crosses over this resistor, we lose some of that voltage. So it started at 60, we're going to lose 24 volts, and we're going to end up at 36. We could also, if we wanted to, throw these numbers over on this one. We're starting at 60, coming back to 36 volts. So now that we've got that, we can think about some of these other resistors down here. So one thing we can see is that as we're going from 36 volts down to zero, uh, that's going to happen along two different pathways. So one pathway just goes right over R2, which means we know that the voltage drop over R2 is going to be 36, because it's got to get from 36 down to zero. So our voltage drop for the second resistor has to be 36 volts. We also know 
that it's going to be a 36 volt drop over both of these resistors put together. There's, we're going to lose some voltage here and then the rest of those 36 over here. So to figure out how much we lose on both, we'll hop over to this diagram. And we see that we still have this same thing. We've got to get from 36 volts down to zero. But if we think about this pathway, along this pathway, we have a voltage, we have a current, and since V equals IR, we can figure out, uh, or we, sorry, we have a resistance, and so we can figure out that current. So the current going through this side is just going to be 36, the voltage drop, over the total resistance. So the current going through here is going to be 6 amps. And this 6 amp current is this current right here. Same, you know, same, uh, nothing really changed about this wire other than the fact that we've split those two resistors. So these, the behavior right here is, is the same. We still have those six amps. So that's the current in R4 and R3. So we've just figured these out. They're both six amps. Um, it doesn't mean that there's 12 amps going through here because it's the same current that just continues on through one resistor and then the next. Still just six amps. Um, we can get R2, or uh, the current through number two now, because we have V and we have R. As long as we have two, we can figure out the third. So V over R is also six amps. Uh, these numbers are the same because we had a six ohm resistor here and a six ohm resistor here. If these had been different resistors, we would get different amounts of current going through each one. The current would prefer to go the path of least resistance. Uh, let's see, now we have these currents here. We can figure out the voltage because it's just the product of V and R. So the voltage drop over resistor number 3 is going to be 2 times 6, or 12. And the voltage drop here, 6 times 4, is 24. And we can double check and just make sure that from here, where it's 36 volts, we go over our 4 and our voltage drop is 24. So we go from 36, we subtract 24, so we're going to end up at 12 volts here. And then sure enough, we get from 12 down to 0 as we cross over the third resistor. If we want to take it one step further and figure out the power that we lose over all these resistors, we just multiply V times I, and we'll get 288 watts. Here we'll get 216. This one's going to be 72 watts. And down here, 144. So all of this is coming from P equals IV. Get it?